So welcome everybody to uh, Live with Prima. My name is Limor Weber and uh, I am going to be creating a fun little um, art journal page tonight using the fabulous new paintables by Prima. Thank you. I'm glad you like my apron. Um, just before we get started, <clears throat> there's a few announcements and I'll just make them now and then won't have to make them at the end. Um, I have to read them because I don't always remember them. But um, after this show, the next class is next Tuesday. So be sure to tune in uh, February 18th, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And um, let me think here. It's with Frank, and he's creating a layout using the new Stationer's Desk collection. So if you haven't seen that collection, it's really beautiful. Very dark and vintage and beautiful, beautiful. And... Of course, the second one that I, I just want to talk about, I finished my first um, project for um, Art Venture. So Art Venture in Canada, April 11th to the 13th. So myself, Carrie, and Jamie are going to be teaching at this event six classes. They're going to be wicked, very, um, very intense, like just awesome stuff. And you know what's really great, you guys, is that um, the price includes all accommodations, meals, goodie bags and more. And if you guys see the goodie bags that you get, that's like worth all the money in the world. Um, you get to play with brand new products, um, which is awesome. Carrie, both Carrie and Jamie designed some fabulous classes. Um, and let me just see, limited spots available. So book now and only, you only need to book uh, $50 just to book, to put down. I'm sorry. My brain's a little bit scattered today and I'm reading. That's how bad it is. Okay. Um, so if you want to sign up, go to Premium Marketing Flowers fan page under the event section, okay? And uh, do you guys want to do like, do you guys want me to show you? Um, I'm just going to show you the cover, okay, of my project so you can kind of see it live. Just to entice you. I'm just going to entice you, okay? But um, here's the cover. Can you guys see that? There is so much technique on here, I can't even tell you. It is so, so exciting. And I can't, all the inside, there is pages that we're actually doing, technique pages inside this, this puppy. So super cool. Can't wait to teach that class. It's going to be wicked awesome. Okay, so you must come. Now, um, just a couple more, um, just a couple more announcements. Um, one of them is... Um, if anybody here is from the local area in Edmonton, I'm, I am going to be teaching three Prima classes at Urban Scrapbooks. Um, it's a big event on uh, at the end of the month, the last weekend of the month, which is, I believe, the 28th. Um, for the weekend, there's three spots left. That's it. And I'm going to be teaching three mixed media classes. So urbanscrapbooks.com. Uh, go and register if you're interested. Awesome, awesome classes that are the same classes I taught in Australia. Um, for those of you that are watching this after, um, I am doing my second part two um, <clears throat> tour to Australia starting June 6th until July the 20th. So um, again, Prima Tour Australia so excited. Dates will be announced right away within next week. All the dates and all the stores will be announced. So I'm really excited about that. So just kind of hang tight and uh, check out my blog for um, all those stores coming up. As well, I'm going to be teaching in uh, another Prima class in Madrid, Spain, España. I'm coming to España to teach all those beautiful Spanish people. So uh, stay tuned for that. I will post at the end of the show, I'll post on, on my blog all about that event and where to sign up if you are interested. And that is March 28th weekend. Okay, so coming up fairly soon in a month or so in Spain. So that's it. That's all I got for you, I think. That's all I can remember. So why don't we go ahead and get started. All right. So I'm going to turn the camera. I'm going to switch the camera. So give me a moment here. I'll move my tea out of the way. Here we go. Are we good? Can everybody see me okay? Yay, yay, yay. All right. We can see my hands. Fabuloso. Okay. So here is the page. Ooh, it got a little bit crusty when I folded it. And it looks a little bit dark in here for a minute. Hang on. Let's turn that light on. 
it's a little bit dark in here today. So um, this is the fun little art journal page that we are going to create tonight. Okay, really, really funky using the beautiful paintable. So I'll go through some of the um, items that we'll be using tonight. And we'll make this one, uh, our next page just slightly different, but same techniques, okay? Just so that I don't have another page um, with the same thing. Now, this is just, you guys have seen this art journal. I've done it before. And it's it's just a, um, what is this? An encyclopedia, I think. Old. Maybe it's a dictionary? No, it's an encyclopedia. Old encyclopedia, so you can use anything you want. I love using it as a journal. I just um, glue a whole bunch of pages together. Okay, and so what we're going to use is I'm going to show you a little bit of our fabulous new Prima products that have just uh, been released. I'm just going to put this on the side here for a moment. So here are two of our brand new paintables, and this package is already open, so you do get a couple of these. You get 16 in each pack, and I want to show you one of the things that's really cool. If you guys remember the old paintables, which I have some right here, actually. The old paintables used to be this really stark white. What I love about these is that they're that beautiful um, tan color, and so they're much less intimidating, especially for somebody that's just starting out. Now, these are watercolor paper, so what's really cool about them is that they'll take uh, wet media really, really well, and, uh, and that's pretty awesome. So I'm going to go through them really quick so that you can see the gorgeous images in them. And uh, the number for these are, oops, there's one hiding right here, is 813963, okay? And look at this gorgeous girl. She's so pretty. And you can kind of see that script on there, so pretty. Um, this flower, which you can paint, so lovely. This one right here, gorgeous, gorgeous. This one is just stunning with the butterflies. I love that, very vintage. And what's really cool with these is that you can use them in your project life. Um, they fit that size, which is really awesome. Look at this one. I love that rose. It's one of my favorites. And then, oh, tell me this is not stunner. Stunner. And then last but not least, this fabulous one. Now, what's really cool is that if you're one of those that's like even more intimidated still by this cream color, no worries. We've got something for you. These ones are the paintables that are in black, and I just wanted to show them to you, even though, yeah, maybe we'll use them tonight for fun, just for variation. But what's really cool is that you don't have to worry about the background at all. You literally can just focus on the flower itself, right, or on the Im middle image. Look how gorgeous they are. These are just stunning. Can you guys see them up close? love that typewriter. You can make the most fabulous cards. You could put like a beautiful sentiment right here. Look at these. Oh, stunning. Stunning. I think we'll for sure use these today. One of them at least. This is that one, the larger ones. Gorgeous, right? And check out that ship. I mean, it's so uh, versatile because you can use it for male and female. This one I just love love that one. And um, we're going to talk about all different ways in which you can actually use to color these puppies. Okay. So I'm going to put these off to the side for now and we'll use them later. And the other thing that I wanted to show you that we're going to use tonight is these are brand new flowers by Prima. And I love these. They're the beautiful um, burlap flowers and canvas. And they're called Juked Jeweled. And it's 574840 love these gorgeous so we'll be using these and a couple other things that are brand new which um i think a couple of people have used them in other classes so far if i'm not mistaken this is the wonderful lace stickers and you can they're kind of resist stickers so we're going to use them tonight they're really fun um both the words and um and and the doily okay <coughs> excuse me and then um, we're going to be using uh, some Canvas Resist. This is the um, Elementals by uh, Finn. And let me see, a couple other things, but um, that's pretty much it from the uh, new collection. So that's what we're going to use tonight. So let's get started, shall we? <laughs> Love those stickers. They're pretty awesome. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about, the reason I use a clip here is because if I don't, you'll see that the book is, is kind of upright. 
So if I want to just like really stick it down, um, I, I you can buy these at your local staples or home or whatever your um, stationery store is in your area. Okay. So what we're going to do is I really love the um, the script on here. Okay. I love the writing. I really don't want to cover it up with gesso. So what I have is clear gesso. And I'm going to tell you right now that this, um, the Winsor Newton uh, clear gesso is my favorite gesso. My, my favorite clear gesso because it's the one that has the least amount of yellow when it dries. I do find that there are certain clear gessos that are kind of yellowy. And so in my personal preference, I like the Winsor Newton clear gesso. Okay. And it looks white at first, but it dries totally clear. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply clear gesso to the pages. And the reason that we're doing that is because what we want to do is we for sure want to ensure that um, our, you know, our very old pages don't soak through when we are, when we add um, any sort of water or any sort of other um, art medium. And the other reason is because we really want to see, it primes the paper and we really want to be able to see that wonderful script, right? So clear gesso is the way to go, my friends, okay? It just primes the pages, really easy to use. It allows you to, um, to use all sorts of mediums on here. All right, so I really love that. So just like that. You don't need to very heavily coat it, but you do need to coat the entire thing. Okay, just going to add a little bit more. And what I love about clear gesso is that it's so gritty. I love it. I love, love, love it. Okay, I'm going to close this up. Like I said, it's Winsor Newton Artist Acrylic Clear Gesso. See? That's, that's what I'm using, all right? So that's that. And then what you want to do is you do want to heat set it, okay? Yeah, clear is great. If you're not a big fan of the white gesso, then for sure you can use clear gesso. Absolutely. <clears throat> An excuse for those of you that are tuning in right now, if you're wondering why I sound the way I sound, it's because I'm super sick. I am from Canada. Edmonton, Alberta. Um, gesso is much grittier than the gel medium, if that's what you're asking. It creates um, a much better... Um, grip for your acrylic paints. Sometimes the gel medium, you'll find it'll repel a little bit um, for certain mediums that you're using. So gesso has a little bit more grit. It almost has like a chalky type consistency um, than gel medium. Gel medium is more, its intention is, is for sealing the surface versus um, prepping the surface. So a little bit of a different um, purpose. Okay. I am Argentinian. Soy Argentina. Romel. <laughs> we are almost neighbors. That's right. Yes, I speak Spanish. Hablo español, señoras y señores. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it, my friends. That's all you get tonight. Just kidding. Okay, let's move on. The next thing that we're going to do is grab 
our fabulous, um, what do you call these things? Our fabulous um, paintables. What do you call them? What do you call them? Man, I'm like, my brain is, is mush today, I swear. Mushy, mushy. It's mushy, mushy. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm just picking kind of my favorites. I don't know. I like this one and this one. I like them all, to be perfectly honest with you. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to place them on here, okay? And we're going to cut a little bit of, one of them we're going to cut a little bit off, but we'll do it after. So we're going to go ahead, sorry the camera keeps going in and out, sorry about that. And I am just going to go ahead and use Fabri-Tac, because I know that it's really nice and strong. For most of you that have never done art journaling before are going to be like, what on earth is this woman doing? It's going to, you know, it's all about layering and, and creating a whole bunch of um, layers until you kind of get that effect that you want. And this one's going to go about right here. How did I do the other page? I can't even remember anymore. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Just like that. But this one's going to go on the bottom. Yeah, I'm going to let it hang off. All right. Well, it kind of looks weird over here, though. No, I got to cut it off. I got to cut it off. Harry. You can't do it. You just can't do it. I might, I, I'll use it in the book, though. I promise. Now it looks awful because I just cut it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oy vey. Oy vey. Okay. What am I doing? And then this guy right here. Carrie. That's why I love you. Where did that come from? All right, there we go. Okay, just like that. So you can still see some script, but it's really, really fun, right? You need to make sure that all ends are down. All ends are down, all right? So this is, here comes the really fun part. We're going to just let it sit for just a couple seconds. I'm going to set this off to the side just for a minute. And what we're going to use tonight is a set of watercolors. You don't need anything expensive. This is a pretty cheapo set that I'm using right now. I didn't grab my expensive ones because um, I use these. I, I really like these, to be honest with you. Um, you can get these at your local scrapbook store, you know, like, or art supply store, Michael's, things like that. All you need, what I do, is I actually, to hydrate them, I just have a water bottle here, and I just go ahead and give them all a really nice hydration, okay? Get them all really nice and wet. And then what I also do is I add some water right here, and this kind of helps me mix, okay? This is just what I do, okay? That's, if you don't do it that way, that's totally fine. But if you've never watercolored before, I just recommend this, especially for your first time. So I'm just going to move that off to the side for a moment and move this off to the side so that I can create on camera. There we go. This is going to be a little bit tricky, so you guys can actually see the colors, but I'll try. And what I like to do is I like to use a nice heavy, uh, a nice wide, or nice big uh, water brush. Okay, so this is a, a number 12 that I like to use. Okay, so this is a, uh, it's called Fine Artist Brush number 12. And it is falling apart. I've had it for a very long time. Um, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty awesome. Okay, and so what I like to do is I like to get it really nice and wet. And so I do have... Um, a water dish right in front of me there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, and you can't, I'm going to pull this off for a second. I'm going to grab um, a couple of these teals right here. And on camera, I know they don't show up as teal, but that's what they are. They're like a turquoise teal. And I'm going to kind of mix two of them together, just like so. I'm going to do that on camera so you can see. And even that third color, that green. And I'm going to smoosh it around like that, but then what I'm going to do, actually, before I do that, because these are watercolor paper, I'm actually going to soak this whole thing, okay? Get it really nice and wet. Ooh, beautiful, okay? Let that blend, 
and then I'm just gonna do that right here as well okay grabbing some of that green just like that gorgeous beautiful isn't that stunning stunner we need a little bit of a darker teal okay just like that as it soaks in just blending and you'll see the variation of color between the paper and the watercolor paintables and how that softens up it's just so beautiful okay and then I do want to add just a little bit of yellow it just tones it down just a little bit it's nice and wet so it's, it's really really beautiful okay just like that fabulous fabulous don't you love that already isn't that gorgeous do you see how it's just soaking in to this beautiful paper and that's what this real this paper is intended for and if you really wanted to spread more just add a little bit more water and you'll notice that beauty just start to happen gorgeous right okay so we're gonna let that sit for just a moment any questions anybody so far before I go ahead <laughs> I know there's no surprise I'm using teal first right you guys are funny okay I'm gonna give this a heat set Any questions, anybody, so far? Um, are you allowed to post what? Um, that's right, you can never have too many paintbrushes. I couldn't agree more. Usually with something like this, um, I would... There's not enough water on here. There we go, that's better. Um, yeah, with pink brushes, I really just like to have a whole bunch of them. Is that what I'm saying? Oh, that's too funny, Peggy. Sorry, I really soaked it, so I better get it nice and dry so that we can do the next step. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to do um, is going to make Romel cry because it's going to be putting on some gesso, and I'm sorry, but it just has to be done. And one of the gessos that I like to use, this has to be dry though, and it's so not, so give me a minute. Hang on, hang tight. What did I do down here? I don't even know. I promise I won't put too much. I know, the peanut paint is rock. Well, he keeps saying how much he hates Jesso, Carrie. I don't think it's a secret, is it? Um, this is called Super Heavy Gesso by Liquitex. And um, I like to take, I have this scraper. This is just a catalyst scraper. As you can tell, I use it a lot. I use a whole bunch of different things for gesso. 
Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just take some out because I'm, I'm almost out in this little container. And just so that uh, Romel doesn't get crazy on me, I'm not going to use that much. Just in service to him. That's how much, much I care about you. Okay. But we do need just a little bit, and it just, it gives the, the super heavy gesso just gives it texture. That's really what it's for, um, almost like modeling paste, I guess, if you will. So we're not going to use too much, okay? Just a bit. Just for better texture. Just texture. Is this all right for you? Is this passable? I don't know. That's probably even too much for you, but that's okay. That's all I'm going to use. And super heavy just so it takes a little bit to dry. So we definitely need to zap it. So let me just get a baby wipe here. <laughs> what did you say, Ramel? All right. <laughs> well, now you're funny. Oh, I thought, oh, you won a ton of gesso. I think you bought a ton of gesso. So before this dries, I'm actually going to take a next step. And the next step is using a stencil. And I left it right here, so hang on. I left it too far away on my sink. This is uh, my most used stencil lately. Um, as Can you tell? You couldn't tell at all, right? <laughs> okay. Um, this number is 960445. Okay. That's the number. I love this stencil. I don't know. It's just kind of, it's my stencil. It's my baby. It's my buddy. The stencil and I get along really, really well for some reason. It seems to be very popular. I, I'm seeing a lot of people using it. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about, this is the brand new Whipped Spackle by Faber-Castell. Um, I'm totally name dropping right now, but I flip and love this stuff. It's like super soft um, modeling paste that's like whipped butter. Oh, it's and it dries quick. So I really, really like it. I just, I needed to say that because I just love it. So that's what we're using tonight. Okay. And it, um, they launched it at CHA. I just, oh, I'm in love with it. Okay. And we're going to put some circles here and there. Just randomness. Don't be like, don't try to be perfect. This is like, this is art journaling. This is art journaling, people. Perfection is not required. In fact, it's frowned upon. Correct? Correct. That's what I have to say about that. Okay. Perfection is frowned upon. Just like this. Lift and gorgeousness. Oh, so pretty. So, so pretty. Let's put like a couple right here. Just a couple for fun. Look at that. Gorgeous. Okay, let me put this in the sink really quick before it dries out on me. Alright. So, definitely want to clean your stencil whenever you're using um, modeling paste or whipped spackle or anything like that so that it doesn't get on your stencil forever and ever and ever. Um, and yes, Carrie is uh, so correct. The Prima stencils are very thick, which is why I love them so very much. So now we're just going to go ahead and continue drying this really quick. I have a sink. I don't need a wash bucket. <laughs>
What I'm more concerned about is this gesso drying than the, this is almost already dry, but the gesso isn't, isn't that crazy? Oh my gosh, Kate, okay, for those of you, do you guys remember that one show that we did on Tuesday night, and it was on my channel, and my gun blew up, that ranger gun blew up, and I gave up on ranger, because, you know, after a while they never, you know, returned my emails and stuff, well, guess what came in the mail yesterday, yep, a brand new heat tool, <laughs> isn't that funny, out of nowhere. This is, uh, yeah, Whipped Spackle by Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft. Okay. Um, any more? Will that modeling paste dry up like liquid text does when it's almost gone? No. Liquitex um, modeling paste, I find mine does that too, and I don't know why. Um, I'm not sure why that is. That's, but I find that if you do, um, if you use light modeling paste, it doesn't do that. So, well, maybe it's a new one. I don't know. I didn't realize this stopped making the guns. Sorry, I'm just being very thorough. I don't know, and I think my gun is kind of dying on me. It's been many years I've had this gun. It's not getting as hot anymore. I should use my new Ranger gun, huh? Okay, pretty good. <laughs> you guys are funny. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to do is, what is the next thing I'm going to do? The next thing I'm going to do is take, I was going to do something else really quick, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and do this now. I'm going to go ahead and take um, this guy right here. And this is um, one of the gelatos, a very well-used gelato, one of my favorites. It's called butterscotch. I know it's kind of hard to see on camera. It kind of looks like butterscotch, I guess, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to apply it right onto our silk circles, okay? So we're literally just prepping it. There we go. Sometimes it just um, needs to warm up. Oh, and this is a little bit wet. Ah! Let me dry it up really quick. I applied too much. It's got to be dry, otherwise this technique is not going to work. Less is more, people. Less is more. All right, and another way to do it, so if it's, yours is still a little bit wet and you kind of pl can't apply it quite to the top because you're afraid that you can just put it down onto your craft mount just like this, okay? Apply it just like so. And then what you can do is you can take a paintbrush, okay, any paint paintbrush of your choice, and you have some water here, and you can literally apply it right to the top, okay? So just like that. And then I don't really have to worry about it being too wet it'll dry right away okay and I'm just going over top of my circles right now at first I'm almost getting all those little ones and it just starts to pop them up a little bit pop them out okay this one was a circle now it's kind of a textured circle very odd little shape and it's so buttery these gelatos are so fabulous they're um, a gel, a water-soluble gel, and they're a highly pigmented, highly pigmented gel, um, and they are water-soluble. So really fun to play with, for sure. And I really love to use them in my mixed media stuff because they're almost like a, um, it's like between watercolor and pastel, it's like the perfect combo. You know what I mean? Just apply a little bit of water to it.
fabulous. And then we're just going to go to the bottom here. <coughs> Perfect the mundo. That's pretty darn good. I really like that. See how it just kind of pops? It gives it a little something else. And then if you really, once it's kind of dry and you're pretty satisfied with that, you can go ahead with the gelato and you can make some of those spaces a little bit darker by going on the edges. Do you see how that one's a little bit darker now? Create a little bit more shadow here and there. Love that. See that? Okay. That's how when it applies really well, you know it's dry. Okay, this one's dry now. Okay, and you can kind of go over the top of all of those. Really, really gorgeous. We are going to do the paintables. Just hang tight. <laughs> These are the paintables, plus there's more. So hang tight, my friends. Scrap in corner. Just drying that up really good. Now it's nice. That's that nice first layer. Now the other thing that I like to do um, is I like to accentuate them a little bit. And because this surface is already gessoed and it's got clear gesso, you want to have them pop just a little bit more. So I can actually blend these with my fingers. This is the Stamper's Big Brush Pen. And it's India ink, so they blend really, really well. And I'm just kind of creating a little bit of a shadowy effect. Not on all of them, just some of them. Um, but you do have to make sure that your surface is prepped before you do that. So either gel medium or gesso or something like that. Okay, so just a little bit. Accentuate some of them. Make them pop just a little bit. Because you'll see, once we add a little bit more media, you, wanna, you want them to stand out a bit. Okay? So that is why I am doing this. Not too much. Not on all of them. Just a tiny bit. All right, just like that, nice and popped. Now I am a happy girl. The next thing that I like to do is I like to accentuate some of those areas right here. So I'm going to actually um, use a little bit of brown of the watercolor that uh, we had used earlier. Let me just clean this brush. Okay, and I know this seems a little bit strange that I'm doing this. And just rub with my fingers. And it accentuates a little bit of those um, stark areas. It just, I don't know, not accentuates, but it blends them, I should say, into the page a little bit better. Okay, just that watercolor that I had used earlier, just a different, like one of those brown colors. Starts to blend a little bit. We're making this page a little bit different anyway. just like that make it run a little bit for sure always add a little bit more water and then it'll be like a tea stain if you will which is beautiful okay have some water on your fingers and just blend away just like so all right fabulous give this a very quick heat set Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to move this off to the side and we're going to play with our paintables at first and our, um, our paintables and our um, canvas resist. So we're going to take that and 
I'm going to use tonight, I'll use the black one since the other ones, um, for the other part, we use the, the cream ones. And I really like these ones. Like, I love this one. It's, this one's gorgeous, but so is this one. I don't know. Which one are we going to use? Let me see. Let's use this one right here. Okay. Love that. And then also we're going to use these beautiful um, canvas resist. Can you guys see the resist on them? Okay. So we're going to take, again, our watercolors, because that's, that's our theme tonight, apparently. And we're going to need some clean water, which I've got right here. And we're going to rehydrate them because that's what I like to do. And one of the things I like to do with these canvases is I like to hydrate them as well. So I actually wet them first, just like that. Can you guys see the image really pop out when you hydrate them first? And what I find is that when I'm coloring with them, it's a little bit easier. I am going to kind of create uh, an orangey, yellow kind of effect here and there, okay? Almost like a sunset, if you will. Just a sunset blended effect. Might even have a bit of pink in there too. Just like that. Isn't that awesome? I love those colors. Just so pretty. And I'm just adding more water and what it does is it helps out a little bit. And then what I usually like to do is I like to take a baby wipe and then I go ahead and wipe all that beautiful excess off of there. And you're left with the most stunning, and if you really just rub that excess off, you'll get that white image popping through so, so beautifully. Can you see that? Isn't that stunning? I just absolutely love that. Love, love, love. Okay, so that's that piece for painting. Now, the next piece is these fabulous paintables. Now I know that a lot of you get a little bit intimidated by them, but don't be. And I've done a, a couple shows on these before, on our older ones. Now what I like to do first is I do like to give them a quick uh, spritz with water and that just kind of opens up the fibers because it is kind of a watercolor paper. It is a watercolor paper, so that's what I like to do is I just open up the fibers a little bit. And <clears throat> I like to use a little bit of a smaller uh, water brush for this because it is a smaller, let me see if I can find an even smaller one here. I know I have one, there we go. I knew I had one. And uh, we're gonna do a little bit more pink. Now, you do not have to be a watercolor uh, expert to do something like this. And what I like to do is I like to have a little bit of water beside me like this. And then I go ahead and I dip it in whatever color you want. Let's take a dark pink for fun. So let's do dark on the bottom and lighter on the top. I don't know, just for fun. And as you can see, I'm not being perfect and it's just bleeding through, right? It's just bleeding, just like that. It's really, really easy. You don't have to be rocket science. You can add a little bit more water. And then I'm just cleaning my brush a bit and I'm just gonna go in with a lighter pink, okay, just like that. I'm almost covering up the image. You almost are not seeing the image at the moment, correct? Then I'm going to go in with a little bit of yellow on the top there, just like that, okay? Just wait, hang tight, because we're getting freaky. And then I'm going to go in with a green to do the leaves, but do you notice I'm not even going in the lines? Really imperfect, if anything. And then what I like to do is I like to take my cloth or whatever I've got and I'm just kind of wiping it off. And I want to show you what you're left with. Okay, and this is not quite done yet, but you already have a beautiful watercolor card 
without having to be totally perfect, right? Can I paint closer to the card? Is that a little bit better? Can you see that? And it's drawing. Oops, it's a little bit off focus. Okay. Should we do one more card so that you can see? Let's do that just for fun, okay? I'll do that just for you because I love you so much. So let's do that. Is that just a little bit closer? Okay. Let's do that one more time for fun. And um, let's pick a different color. Let's do, um, let's do like a dark teal. <laughs> so you want to, I start with the dark color. Oh, first I'm going to hydrate it. So I'm going to do first. And then I'm going to start with my dark. I blend it in first. Okay. Start with my dark. Don't have to be perfect. Then I'm going to go in with a little bit of my lighter. Just like that. And then sometimes I like to take a third color, which is kind of maybe my yellow. So you can see my completely imperfect drawing. And then let's add some, like, I don't know, orange down here or something for fun. Just because we can, right? And then what I like to do, like I said before, is I like to go ahead and I take my cloth and I wipe a lot of that off, okay? And it depends on what medium you use, you'll get that intensity. If we left it on here, of course, we'll get more. We can keep adding layers to make it a little bit more intense and it'll continue to soak it up. So we can still add darker. There we go. Okay, we can make it darker, it's okay. So let's make it a little darker and allow it to soak. You just, you don't need to use as much water as I had before. And then it'll soak a little bit better. Okay, just like so. And then we'll go in with that orange. What orange did I use? That one, I think. Ooh, that one's a bit bright. That's okay. Oops. Look how gorgeous that is, though. Okay, and we'll just dab a little bit. But as you can see, it really starts to soak in. Right? You don't have to be like this super perfectionist person. Sorry, the camera's off focus. There we go. You don't have to be like the most perfect um, creator to, to do anything fancy on here. You can just um, be a total beginner. So that's, that's how you do the paintables. But there's another step that I actually want to talk about. I want these lines, some of these lines to pop a little bit. And so, of course, depending on the medium that you use, um, you'll get a different look. So let's add just a little bit more color again, okay? So I do want these lines to be a little bit darker, just on the bottom at least. Just like so. Just a bit. And I use my fingers and I blend them in a bit. Okay. Just like so. And I even want that yellow to pop just a little bit. Even the middle there as well. And then we want that green to pop a bit. Okay. Just like so. See how it's kind of popping now? really really pretty okay so the next step that we're actually going to do is I like to take I'm gonna dry this up really quickly put a whole lot of water so it's buckling on me a little bit but you can see in the back you want that soaked look okay that's how you know you're using enough water <coughs> they are they're so gorgeous right Okay, so the next step that I like to do is I actually like to take some gel medium. So I'm going to take, this is a Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft gel medium that I have here, and I'm trying to open it. Oh, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that grunting. I couldn't get it open. And I'm just going to take a brush, 
and I'm actually going to go ahead and give it one quick um, coating of the gel medium and you'll see why in just a moment. I'm sealing it so that I can actually use a Stamper's Big Brush pen on it and be able to blend it. And you'll see that this dries totally clear. So if you see a little bit of that shininess, it's not going to be shiny as soon as you dry it. I've heard lots of people using that wink of Stella. I'm not really sure what it is. It's like a pen or something, right? Okay. Now what I like to do is, now that this is uh, fairly dry, I like to take um, a, what's, this is the color I want. I like to take usually a color that's complementary to make some of those edges a little bit dark. Now this is India ink, so I can go ahead now on here and blend this and make it a little bit darker. You can go right here and it just accentuates. Can you see that? Accentuates some of those um, edges. So that's what I like to do. It's kind of like a corally color. Just adds a little bit of something. Shadows, if you will. Don't see them a whole lot, but just enough to give us something, something. I just blend right away. Can you see how they start to really pop? And then I even want to do it on here. But you wouldn't be able to do this effect unless you used um, something like gel medium. Okay? See how it's just really popping now? There we go. Yeah, really, really pretty. Okay, so that's why you want to use that. And then I'm just going to take my yellow and get right in there because this one didn't quite catch the watercolor yellow. So there we go. That's a little bit better. And then even these guys, these guys need a little bit of green. So we're going to have them be a little bit of green with Stamper's Big Brush Pen. Yep, I have every color in front of me. So uh, really easy to find a color. Okay. Check that out. Stunner, stunner alert, stunner. All right, let's get in there now, people, shall we? This card turned out awesome, too. It's really pretty. All right, let me move this out of Whoops, there goes my stamp pad, which I will need in just a moment. I should show you what I need it right now. Now, before we add this, uh, the rest of the pieces, what I like to do is a little bit of stamping. So we're gonna take a couple different stamps. This one is a clear stamp. Let me move the camera up just a tiny bit. Okay. Is this okay? And um, <clears throat> this one is 960810. And I don't ever use a block, because I'm anti-block. <laughs> and I like to take, uh, this is archival ink, so you need something permanent. And we're going to add just a little bit of texture here and there. And I like to roll my stamps. If you guys have ever taken my classes, you'll know I'm a stamp roller. Okay, just kind of everywhere, here and there and everywhere. Just like so, we're going to take uh, stamp number two. And stamp number two is 550943. And it's this funky script. It's kind of an old one, but it's my oldie, oldie but goodie stamp. And I love it because it's got like weird text on it. I don't even know what it is, numbers or something. I don't know. I can't even tell what it is, to be honest. But it just adds a whole lot of texture everywhere. 
and I love that. So that's what I'm using, just like that. Okay, perfect the mando. There's our stamping, and I'm going to show you. You see that gorgeous stamping? Just adds a little something, 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 something. Now, what we need to do is we need to add our fabulous, um, we need to dry these puppies, don't we? Our strips that we did earlier. Now we are not gonna use every single one, but we'll use some. All right, now I'm going to take this one. Now what you'll find is when you put a lot of water on them, the stickiness stays down here, which I'm totally okay with, because you can just go ahead and add glue to it. So it's not really a big deal. Um, I find that I use so much, uh, I use so much wet stuff that that's kind of what happens to mine a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and apply it about right here. I want it to be about the length of my card. Yeah, somewhere around there. I can't remember how I did this. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Somewhere around here. So I'm going to cut that piece off right about there. So we can use this on a later project. Actually, I kind of like the yellowy on there. So we're actually going to cut this piece off. I know, I'm being picky, but it's my project, right? So I kind of like that piece better. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a whole bunch of all these little pieces. Okay. We're going to just take them off. Just even these ones, these really fun ones. Okay. Because we're going to use pretty much almost all of these. So they're so much fun. Even the excess pieces, yes, you definitely want to take the excess pieces off. They are just as fun. I promise you. <coughs> Excuse my coughing. Oh my gosh. What we're going to do is we're going to apply them right here. And we're going to find my glue that I buried somewhere over here. I'm going to grab this one, which I think is so much fun. And I'm going to apply some right there. Very randomness, as you can see. I didn't measure, I'm not being perfect, I'm just applying. Because all you're doing, people, is creating texture on your page and balance. Okay, just like so. And then we're gonna add this piece right here. Just a little bit. Ow, that's my finger. Good thing that didn't cut all the way through. There could have been gushing blood everywhere right now. That was close. Let's see, did I cut myself? No, but that was pretty darn close. Ouch. Okay, just like that. Just a piece or two. Oh my gosh, my fingers are so sticky. And then we're going to lift this puppy up and we're going to start applying some of these guys right here. Just like that, we're going to leave that one. That one we're not applying quite yet. Just like that. And we're going to cut about right there. Okay, this one's going to go about right on top of it. Just like so. And next, we, are, we want some funky pattern because we want to use the excess, right? Because the excess is just so fun and pretty. We can't throw that out. But I bet you you would have if I didn't tell you. Right, you guys? You would have thrown it out. I know the truth. I know you. You would have been like, oh, that's just garbage. That's rubbish, as the Aussies would say. That's a whole lot of rubbish. And then this guy right here, we're going to use that too, even though, again, it's the excess. We don't care. We're using it. Okay. Just like so. 
just creating a little bit of layering. Just like that. And what's that little piece? The little piece is kind of fun. I don't know. Oh no, we gotta use this one. This one's really fun. Gotta use a little bit of this one. I like those lines, they're kind of fun. Yeah, that one can go about right there, I think. I like him. There's my glue. And actually we're gonna have him face up. Okay, just like that. Next what I like to do is I like to take my uh, the back of my my uh, piece and we're gonna kind of mount it. We're gonna see how big is that. Yeah, that's kind of perfect. About right there. Fabulous, love that. And what we're going to do is we're gonna take that water brush that we had used earlier and just apply a little bit of that teal over the top. Okay, just like so. And it resists just a little bit, but that's okay. And give it a very quick heat set. Just like that. And then, do you remember those flowers that we talked about earlier? Those burlap flowers? This one is 574840. And we're going to take this flower right here. And yes, we're going to butcher it just for a minute. I am known to butcher flowers all the time, but it's okay. Oh, this one's really glued on tight. We're going to take the back of it off. Yep, we are, if I can do it, which usually I can. These are all handmade, but they are made so well that sometimes they're actually hard to butcher. That's how good your Prima flowers are. <laughs> sometimes they're hard to butcher. Oh, there we go. Okay. And now I'm going to actually use it, cut in half. This is how to extend the life of your Prima flowers. We're going to add this one right here. I love using my fabric tack, just like so, right there. And uh, we're going to use this one and we're going to apply it on the other side, about right there. Just poking out just a little bit, right? And how did I do it? Yes, yes, yes. And then we're going to apply this down. That just about went on my Mac. See how it's just kind of poking out just a little bit? Okay, and then what we want to do is we want to take our fabulous, famous roll of, um, what do you call this again? Uh, drywall tape. Drywall tape, yeah. And you just need about a strip about that big. You don't need that much. And you're going to just cut some random pieces off and you're going to apply them here and there. And this is just going to kind of be poking through on the top and such. It's just like that. Okay. It just creates a, a level of just another little element. Now we're going to pop this out a little bit with some three dimensional. Uh, foam dots, which I had right here. I really did. I actually brought them. I had them really lined up so that they wouldn't go anywhere. And I probably put them away. I did. Okay. I thought I had the big ones here too, though. I don't know where they went. Who knows when I move stuff around. So we'll be using some little ones. We're almost done, people. I'm sorry. I went a little bit. My head? Oh, no. I'm on time still. Taking that off. Okay, just like so. All right, and we're going to apply this guy right here. It's a little bit different than our other one, but that's okay. 
different is awesome. And then this guy is going to go about right there. Okay. And what this does is it kind of makes it a flat flower because it's in my journal. I really don't want a crazy amount of bulkiness on here. So I actually like to apply quite a bit of glue and get it really nice and flat. Okay. Just really flat. Just like that. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Just like so. Any questions, anybody, so far? Whoops, that just about came off. Questions, questions? Okay. Now, the next thing that I want to do before we are complete, almost complete, is I like to take a little bit of acrylic paint. Okay, so this is just black acrylic paint. And um, you just need a little bit. You don't need a whole lot, to be honest with you. So just like that much. You don't even need that much, actually. And I like to take my scraper guy. Remember we were talking about earlier? And um, you just want to apply a little bit on the edges of it, just like so. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create these fun little borders. Okay. And they don't have to be perfect. In fact, the more imperfect they are, the better. Okay, just like that. Rotate. And you don't have to get it in every corner. You can sometimes even get it in the middle of the page. Okay. Just like that. Imperfect is fabulous. But if you want to get it in every corner, let's just do all the corners just for fun. Okay. And on canvas, this is even prettier. So that's kind of what it looks like. Okay, let me just move this out of the way and then you can see the whole thing. Just going to clean that off. I know it's a waste of paint just now, but this thing is going in the garbage. We need a baby wipe in here. We need a baby wipe up in here. Okay, so this is kind of what it looks like. Really cool. It's nice and framed. It's perfect. The only thing that I think it needs is just a little bit of, um, this is the Liquitex um, Super Fluid uh, Acrylic Ink which I really like. So you can do like really fun splatter marks, um, which you guys know how much I love to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply a little bit down here. And I'm going to take my fan brush, and you guys have seen me do this a million times. Okay, it's nothing new. Okay, and we're going to just take the fan brush and splatter. And especially because we have black right here, you kind of want to have a little bit of black here and there because um, it balances it out. And even on the flower a little bit, you need, you need that balance. Otherwise, it's just a little bit off. And if you were really, really brave, you could, of course, take it and do some big droplets. Um, but what's really fun to do, if you can, if you have like, let's take this lid from the gesso. I don't usually do this, but that's okay. You could take um, a brush. This is really fun to do. Take a brush, and you could paint the edges of your lid. Let's see if we can get some paint on here. Let's do this. Get some paint on here. Right, get a lid. Get some paint on the edges. If you can get it, and then you can do some fun circles. Right? How fun is that? Love that. There, right? It just gives it a little something. Something, something. Just love that. You can even like do it. Oh, gorgeous, right? So there we go. I think that's it, my friends. I don't think I have anything else. Um, I think that's all the techniques for tonight. So that's, you know, that's pretty much the page. Just slightly, a slight variation using a little bit of a different, um, you know, a different uh, paintable, which was the black one. 
but of course both are the same and I'll show you the other page just so that you can see the difference. This is that page. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I forgot. I knew there was something I forgot. Just a second. Of course, it was these guys. This is the lace stickers, which I think you guys wanted to really see. For the other page, I used it um, white, and I literally just applied it right here, which I think, you know, it looks so beautiful white, and you can see, you can peel it off. I'll show you how gorgeous it is. Just a second, as soon as I can get my sticky fingers to work. See how it's like this. It's a very, very, very thin. Okay. So you just want to apply it like so. Ta-da. Gorgeousness. And it just adds a beautiful, beautiful element to your page, right? Now, with the writing ones these guys right here what's and I'm not going to put it on this page but I'm going to show you how to color them okay but what's really cool is you can take these guys and actually color them and I like to take my I'm going to move this off to the side for a second since we have like a minute or two before the show is over and I'm going to do this in a different color let's do it green just for fun but you can take this for example uh, together and you can take your Stamper's Big Brush pens, let's say, and just color them right up. You can take the Prima Chalk inks. You can take anything you want. And then just, you know, take all the other stuff off. And you have got yourself a cute... And you can even add, like, a second color to this. This is going to turn brown because I'm using orange and green, but whatever. Right? But you can do fun little lettering that you can put on your pages, right? Really, really cute. So that is it. Let me just uh, flip the camera around. I'm going to stop the record. Thank you so much for watching. For those of you that tuned in, we'll see you next time.